The equipment comprises strip cups, single-use gloves, paper towels, alcohol at 70%, labeled sterile test tubes, tube rack, and optionally a device to measure electrical conductivity. If possible, teeth should be cleaned in a dry way, and although alcohol is used here, cleaning is still considered dry as the alcohol evaporates quickly. During this step, paper towels are soaked with alcohol and teeth swept clean. Eventually, more towels per teeth have to be used. By way of exception, that is, when teats are heavily contaminated, teats may be cleaned using warm water. In the parlor, there are usually hand shower sets for that purpose. The way the teats are dried should be stressed, from distal to proximal, in order to keep teat tip contamination at a minimum. The first jets are milked into the strip cup and evaluated macroscopically. Changes in the consistency of the other secretion are indicative of clinical mastitis. For the milker, this step decides on whether the cow is milked into the tank or if her milk is dumped afterwards. Tubes from left to right contain other secretions in decreasing quality, from clinically inconspicuous to strongly impaired. When these secretions are moved, clots become more visible in some tubes. Ideally, the first jets are free of changes in color or composition. Other jets may contain first signs of clots. A massive loss of milk characteristics, however, is linked to severe impairment of the other health. By now, teeth should be ready for milking, meaning that they appear plump and are thin-walled. To disinfect them, either single paper towels are used for each teeth, or towels are folded in a simple way as seen here. In any case, towels must be soaked with alcohol. It's important for the operator to start disinfection with the opposing quarters in order to avoid contamination with his or her hands. Using a stained solution, the areas which are disinfected become visible. The goal is to disinfect the tip of the teat with circular movements and to also include the teat canal. Sterile test tubes have to be handled with care. As dirt may trickle from the other, tubes should be kept in a horizontal position most of the time 
and the plug should be protected with the hand either like this or like that having the plug pointing downwards but neither in this way nor in that way having the plug pointing upwards because there is the risk of contaminating the plug. Formic sampling starts with those quarters facing the operator. Tubes are opened below the udder with three-fourths of them filled and shut below the udder. It's good to test the direction of the milk jets first. Milk may leak over the hands unless this milk proceeds into the tube or passes the sensitive parts of the plug. Drawn samples should be cooled and sent to the laboratory with a corresponding preliminary report. Analysis should include the pathogen isolation, an antibiogram and, if not already checked on calcite level by means of the CMT, the count of somatic cells. Since the latter does not change in this fraction or the next approximately 200 milliliters, more samples per quarters may be drawn especially when sampling errors are suspected. If at hand, electrical conductivity can also be measured. However, it is important to stress that this test must be performed with the first milk jets rather than with the foremilk since the correlation between the latter and the cell count is rather low. It is also important not to touch the teat before this test, so teat cleaning is performed after conductivity measurement. <laughs> 